A few months ago, I did a video on painting a very old grenadier wizard and wanted to see what I can do with a really bad miniature. And surprisingly, I actually kind of enjoyed it. I uh, really liked the camp feel of those old school miniatures, so much so that I bought a handful of them and I'm gonna hopefully paint them up eventually and into a full-fledged adventuring party. So this time we are tackling the Barbarian with Axe. Love that name. And you can see this is just how I got it off eBay. Now let's see what we can do with it. The first thing to do was a significant amount of cleanup work. You can see how bad in condition the figure was in the previous photos. So it took a lot of filing and scraping to get it in some decent shape and did my best to get the paint off, but 40 year old testers, enamel paints, fairly hard to remove. But after it was cleaned up, primed black, and we can begin the painting. As usual, I like to start with the largest surface area normally. And when doing one-off figures like this, I always like to mix up the flesh recipe a little bit, try something new. So started off with a mix of Vallejo model color, saddle brown and beige red. Uh, I already put a darker mix on below, and now we're proceeding to add some highlights by mixing in some beige red, more beige red to that previous mix. Our next color is straight beige red. Now my idea for going in on this figure was that this was very Norris Viking type figure, so I wanted somewhat not pale skin, but lighter color skin, blonde uh, hair, that type of look. And uh, also the other thing to keep in mind is like the problem we had with the wizard figure from Grendir. Uh, these figures have some areas that are really strongly emphasized and others that are not. So uh, the arms, for example, here don't really ha have a whole lot of muscle definition. Definitely not the same exaggeration of muscle definition we get on most modern miniatures, so uh, I'm doing my best to add some definition around the biceps and shoulder area. Our next highlight is once again beige red, this time mixed with some Vallejo model color basic skin tone. And once again trying to add more definition to these flat areas, uh, especially the fingers. Grenadier figures from this time period uh, they don't have fingers, they basically have sausages, and there's no knuckles or anything like that. So as we increase in the highlights, uh, I'm starting to concentrate the highlights more where the knuckles should be so we can give the hands, for example, more definition. And our final edge highlight, we are going with Vallejo Game Color Pale Flesh. Fairly extreme and light flesh color compared to what we were just using. But once again, I'm trying to add some definition, some contrast to this figure. So I want a more uh, extreme highlight in some areas. Uh, this is only going on the knuckles and just a few spots here and there, very small areas. Next thing to do is to add some color to the shade areas. Uh, I went fairly light on the shadows previously because I wanted to add this step and define it a bit better uh, where it needs it. So uh, we're using some very thin, basic glazes here to add some darkness and a little bit of color. And we are using Vallejo Game Color Stormy Blue mixed with some model color magenta. And this is going on very thin, glazing it on, just adding a, a little bit more shade and adding color at the same time in a few areas uh, like the, uh, the arms here, for example. And the significant area is the uh, one leg, his right leg, it's underneath the body. And I wanna try to add a bit more shadow to that, especially since his legs seem a little bit short for this figure. Next thing to do is his, I think it's called Brigandine armor. 
and undercoated that with some Vallejo Game Color charred brown. And now I'm picking out each individual little bulge with a mix of the charred brown and some Game Color Brassy Brass. Uh, once again, trying to add some definition here. So that's why we are going with this method, painting each one individually rather than a wash. Uh, this area doesn't have really significant recesses where a wash would take. Uh, also, I did decide to go for a goldish color here because I thought there was too much metal on the miniature. However, it uh, did prove to be a little bit of a problem as we will see coming up. And then to highlight all our little banded bumps, I mixed in some Vallejo Model Air Silver to the Brassy Brass. For the steel parts, I undercoated with some Vallejo Model Air Gun Gray, and now I'm proceeding to add some highlights by mixing in some silver to the Gun Gray. Uh, the thing about old school miniatures, they are made out of lead and you will notice uh, weapons can be a big issue. They're usually held or sculpted close to the body because you can't have a very thin sword uh, extending out from a miniature. It's going to bend and break off. And also they tend to be very thick. You can see by this uh, significantly thick axe, uh, it does prove a little bit of an issue when it comes to painting details because it's very... It's just large and rounded. There's no detail to it. I did consider trying to add an edge to the axe, but uh, or at least a painted edge, uh, signifying well the edge of the axe. But it it just wouldn't be possible here. It just wouldn't work. To shade the steel bits, we're going very easy on it, uh, using a mix of black and brown game color ink, and it's fairly thin and I'm kind of stippling it on uh, a little bit around the shade areas around the helmet but most significantly on the axe uh, to add some depth to the axe visual depth uh, I got the idea of rather than trying to paint a, a comical edge to it uh, paint it more like uh, an axe you would go buy at Home Depot they uh, often come like painted red and as you use them it the paint wears off uh, don't want to do paint here of course but uh, I wanted a significantly darker, uh, coarser metal around the center of the axe, and then it gets cleaner as we get to the edge, and that would help to signify the edge of an axe since we have a fairly blunt axe as it is. Next comes the beard, and the beard is a crazy mess. It's uh, kind of ridiculous, but it's the style that figures were sculpted in during the day. A lot of areas were really overemphasized by the sculptor so we have a pretty unkempt hair here <laughs> and starting off uh, I undercoated with a um, I think it was charred brown I can't remember now actually um, but I am now uh, going over that with some Vallejo uh, I believe it's Panzer Aces new wood and trying to leave some of the darker brown in the recesses For the highlights, we are using Vallejo Game Color Plague Brown and starting to pick out individual hairs. Uh, the one color we really don't want to use on blonde hair, which I know some newer painters use, are yellows. Blonde hair is really not yellow, at least not the type you can normally get out of a bottle. Uh, you want to stick with more yellow ochre colors. Uh, you can even work in a little bit of green. Uh, subtle, subtle green I'm talking about here, like English uniform from Model Color it would make a good shade color for blonde hair but uh, definitely stay away from your bright yellows your sun yellows or things like that and then for our final highlight plague brown mixed with whites uh, i am significantly highlighting over highlighting the hair because i really wanted it to stand out uh, because it is the most standout feature on this figure well maybe not including the horns. Have you noticed those?
time to paint his undies, and this is another area that's really overemphasized by the sculptor, so we don't want to highlight it too much uh, because it's going to look a little bit silly. There's enough folds in it as it is. And also decided to go with red because red you usually don't want to over highlight anyway. So we started off with Vallejo model color black red and now proceeding to add some highlights with uh, Vallejo model color 926 red. And then our final highlight color, mixing in a small amount of Vallejo model color flat red to our 926 red. Very subtle highlight here. So going back to the idea of large areas on these miniatures because of the soft material, hey, let's paint the horns now. Uh, yeah, they're ridiculously huge. And to paint them, I started off with a base coat of Vallejo Model Color Iraqi Sand, uh, which I then gave a light coat of sepia ink to just add a little bit of color. And now I'm trying to uh, emphasize the base of the horns with a very small brush and using some Vallejo Model Color Leather Brown. Just drawing little lines and adding some shadow to the base of the horns. And then for the tips, highlighting with Iraqi Sand. Remember that we used that same color for the base coat, but we covered it with the sepia tone, so that darkened the Iraqi Sand, so we can use the same color as highlight. Uh, one thing I want to mention here, uh, bullhorns tend to be very, very in color, and normally they are dark at the tip and then wider at the bottom. I didn't do it here because uh, the horn touches the dark axe, so I don't want those two dark areas next to each other. Uh, that's why I went for the reverse, so you can see the change in color from the axe and the horn. There were a lot of small little bits that I completed off camera, but uh, Getting towards the end of this figure, I realized I had a problem, and that was the hair. Wasn't following my own advice to de-emphasize areas that are sculpted to extreme, and I put too much contrast in the hair, and it just really, really bothered me. Uh, also, the color I wasn't too happy with. It was blending into the gold areas that I painted. So, decided to fix it up a little bit, and I'm going over it now with, once again, the new wood that I used previously, but this time mixed with some Vallejo model color gold brown. And the paint's a little bit thin here. This is more of a glaze, because I'm not trying to completely paint over everything here, more uh, just trying to tint the color more and also cover up more of that original very dark brown that I used. So we don't have that dark line in the recesses of all these multitude of hair strands. And then to highlight the hair, we're only going to do one highlighting step this time, so we don't, once again, add too much contrast. So I've added some Vallejo Game Color Pale Yellow to the mix, and trying to highlight a significant amount of the hair here, not concentrate on sharp edges or anything like that. And then we finish off with a very, very thin wash of sepia ink. Uh, again, if we do this too thick, it's going to add too much contrast. So uh, trying to give a nice, thin, smooth coat over everything. It'll also help tone down our highlight a little bit and blend everything together a bit better. And also the sepia is a brown, but it has a little bit of green in it. Uh, like I said, you can use very small amounts of green to shade blonde hair. And there we go, our Barbarian is done. A slight improvement from how I got it from eBay. Uh, these figures are kind of fun to paint. I'm really enjoying doing this series uh, so much so. I'm going to do a whole party of these guys eventually. Nice, dorky, cheesy looking adventurer party that's ready to kick in the door of a 10 foot by 10 foot room with an orc guarding a treasure chest in it. 
Um, the significant portions, as I mentioned, uh, there's some areas that I just have no detail on them and some that have too much. Uh, using highlighting shading, you can emphasize some detail that's not there, uh, but there's only so much you can do with paint. Uh, it's kind of like painting a uh, six pack on a fat guy's stomach using a magic marker. You're not going to fool everyone, but uh, you can fix some things using a proper shade and highlight. Uh, just know your limits, essentially. These are fun figures to paint. You can pick them up fairly cheap on eBay. Some people try to sell them at collector's prices, like $20, $50 a single miniature, but usually you could find used ones for about 2 to $3 each. So pretty cheap compared to the prices you get from modern figures. And uh, once again, yeah, I do like the style. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. As always, see you next time. Bye-bye. It's easy to get hurt. Like when I got my butt caught in the toaster? Yeah.